Now, before studying the emetics and anti-emetics, the first thing you need to understand is that vomiting is not something bad that you need to suppress. But in cases where vomiting is a symptom of an altered function in the body, uh, then we need to suppress it. Or sometimes we even need to induce it and that's why we use emetics. Now, to understand the drugs used to produce emesis or to counteract it, we first need to understand the pathophysiology of vomiting. The first thing in the pathophysiology is that there is a vomiting center in the medulla having M1 and H1 receptors. The M1 are the main receptors. Now this vomiting center can be stimulated by a number of different pathways. The first pathway that can stimulate the vomiting center is the cerebral cortex. Why? Because you might uh, remember that whenever you saw something bad or smelled something bad or actually thought of something bad, it caused, it caused a nauseous feeling. This is basically known as anticipatory emesis. The second way the vomiting center can be stimulated is by motion and motion you know it stimulates the vestibular nuclei having M1 and H1 receptors causing motion sickness. Another way that the vomiting center can be stimulated is by visceral pain. Now visceral pain if you have experienced it of course it is a slow, dull, aching pain and it is, it is usually associated with vomiting. How that happens is that bradykinins and substance P that are, that are released in the pain producing areas basically stimulate the neurokinin receptors in sm spinal cord which in turn stimulate the vomiting center. Fourthly, the pharynx and GIT can also cause vomiting. How? Pharynx and GIT have uh, the GIT mostly has enterochromaffin cells which release serotonin. Now, any irritation to the gastric mucosa by chemotherapy, radiotherapy, any irritation mechanically to the pharynx can uh, increase the release of serotonin and tell the vomiting center via the efferent vagus going to the nucleus of tractus solitarius and then to the vomiting center to cause vomiting. Now the chemotrigger zone is an area of the medulla at the floor of the fourth ventricle which receives input from blood-borne drugs or hormones and communicates with other structures in the vomiting center to initiate vomiting. Now the receptors that are present in the CTZ are serotonin receptors, D2 receptors, cannabinoid receptors, opioid receptors and substance P. They can be stimulated by drugs, toxins, hormones and any sort of irritants actually. Because there is no blood-brain barrier at CTZ, they can easily do that. That's why CTZ directly stimulates the vomiting center to cause vomiting. Now, looking at this pathway, we can see where we can put some drugs to cause this pathway to stop and have anti-emetic actions. The antagonists that we can use are 5H3 antagonists, D2 antagonists, M1 antagonists, H1 antagonists, and NK1 antagonists. Now the agonists that we can use to stop vomiting are the cannabinoid agonist. Now these receptors are basically responsible for pleasure, eating behaviors, and overall mood of the patient. If we antagonize all these receptors, we will stop vomiting. Now, another way to manipulate this pathway is to use emetics. Now, why would we use uh, emetics? Maybe in poisoning, uh, in cases where there is indigestion, etc. First thing we can do to cause emesis is to stimulate the CTZ and secondly we can irritate the gastric mucosa or we can do both. The most commonly used emetics are 
ipecac syrup mustard common salt and subcutaneous apomorphine now there are some contraindications to emetics that is not to give to unconscious patients they can aspirate the gastric contents corrosive or caustic alkali patients should not be given and emetics cns stimulant to intoxication should not be managed with emetics they will cause seizures and also not give to kerosene poisoning patients now let's classify the anti emetics there are basically eight classes that we will discuss here number 1 is the 5 ht3 receptor antagonists secondly anti histamines or h1 antagonists anti cholinergics d2 antagonists also known as antipsychotics or neuroleptics that are used in schizophrenia if you remember nk1 receptor antagonists prokinetic agents cannabinoids and some adjuvants that are glucocorticoids and also benzodiazepines now we'll discuss each of them in detail firstly 5 ht3 receptor antagonists how they act is that basically what they do is they block the vagal efferents from the gut to the uh, nts and then to the vomiting center that is their peripheral action okay and secondly what they do is that they block the impulses to nucleus of tractus solitarius and ctz that is their central action the main drugs are ondansetron this is the prototype second is the granny citron now the granny it's actually longer acting than the prototype and she is very proud about it it is used mainly as a transdermal patch to cancer therapy induced vomiting next is pelono citron now pelono is a person Uh, who is actually very long or tall so it is the longest acting with a half life of about 40 hours what it does is that it prevents delayed emesis because it's long acting of chemotherapy lastly we have ramocitron now ramo is someone who is very irritable so we use this uh, drug in irritable bowel syndrome Now all together these drugs can be used in hyperemesis of pregnancy post op and post radiation emesis but remember one thing that they cannot be used in motion sickness because we saw that there was no f5 uh, ht3 receptor on the vestibular apparatus or on the base on the vomiting center actually Now let's look at the antihistamines or h1 antagonists now referring to the previous diagram you can you can easily imagine where they will act they will block the h1 receptors on the vestibular apparatus and also directly on the vomiting center they also have central anticholinergic activity and that is their main action that is they block the m1 receptors on the vestibular apparatus and also on the vomiting center they also have a sed sedative action now their use is mainly in motion sickness post operative uh, nausea and other sorts of vomiting but mainly in motion sickness because they have an m1 and h1 antagonist capability the main drugs used are diphenhydramine promethazine cyclizine and meclizine cyclizine and meclizine are less sedative their side effects are mainly drowsiness and dry mouth due to the anti muscarinic action now let's look at the anticholinergics anticholinergics are the drugs of choice for motion sickness now how they act is that they block the efferents from vestibular apparatus and directly block the m1 receptors on the vestibular apparatus and on the vomiting center 
They also have sedative action. The chief drug used is scopolamine, also known as hyoscine. This is the drug of choice for motion sickness. It is mainly applied as a transdermal patch before the, starting the journey and it has basically atropine like side effects. Next we'll look at the D2 antagonists or antipsychotics or neuroleptics. First thing that they are very potent but I'll tell you in a while why we don't use them. They act by blocking the D2 receptors of the chemotrigger zone. They also have anticholinergic and antihistaminic properties. They are very potent but they have a vast range of extrapyramidal symptoms like dystonias and tremors. They are mainly used in vomiting due to drugs, uremia, systemic infections, etc. because all these things directly stimulate the chemotrigger zone. The chief drugs used are prochlorperazine, which is the most commonly used D2 antagonist emetic, antiemetic, and chlorpromazine, etc. Remember the extrapyramidal symptoms caused by D2 antagonists. And they cannot be used uh, to manage the vomiting caused by anti-Parkinson disease, uh, anti-Parkinson drugs. Because anti-Parkinson drugs are D2 agonists and these are D2 antagonists. So we don't want to give an agonist and antagonist at the same time. The next drugs we used are from the NK1 receptor antagonist or neurokinin receptor antagonists. How they act is basically they block the NK1 receptor, hence block the transmission of slow or dull visceral pain through the spinal cord to the vomiting center. They also block the action of substance P on the chemotrigger zone and NTS. The chief drugs involved are aprepitant and fosaprepitant. These are very important, please remember this. Now, they can be used uh, as a highly effective treatment in prevention of delayed MSs due to chemotherapy and they also act by increasing the efficacy of other antiemetic drugs. The major side effect that they have is that they are generally well tolerated but they can cause flatulence and diarrhea. The next class of the antiemetic drugs are prokinetic agents. Now they act by promoting coordinating movements of upper GIT to make the gastric empty, emptying fast and effective. The chief drug used is metoclopramide. We, uh, we talked about this in 5-HT4 agonists in the serotonin receptors video. It basically has two actions, central and peripheral. Centrally, it acts as a D2 receptor antagonist in CTZ and at high concentration, it also blocks serotonin receptors in CTZ. Peripherally, in GIT, it has a prokinetic effect by 5-HT4 agonism and 5-HT3 antagonisms, which basically increase the acetylcholine secretion by myenteric motor neurons, thus increasing the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter, increasing the tone and amplitude of antral contractions, relaxation of pylorus, and increased peristalsis. Now, prokinetic agents uh, have other uses as well, apart from anti-emetic action. They are used in GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, but they cause extra pyramidal symptoms as well, so they have been replaced by proton pump inhibitors and H2 blockers. They can be given in diabetic gastric stasis or post operative gastroparesis or idiopathic gastroparesis. They increase the gastric emptying to perform gastrointestinal radiological procedures and also before general anesthesia in emergencies because normally the patient is asked not to eat uh, before surgery.
Now, important drug interaction you need to remember is that metoclopramide basically increases the absorption of diazepam and decreases that of digoxin. The side effects of metoclopramide are due to its D2 receptor antagonism, that is, they cause extrapyramidal symptoms and drug-induced Parkin Parkinsonism. If you remember from physiology, the prolactin inhibitory factor was actually dopamine. So when there is no dopamine ac action by inhibiting D2 receptor, then there will be hyperprolactinemia and gynecomastia and menstrual disturbances. Now four drugs that I forgot to mention here are domperidone, cisapride, mozapride and itopride. Domperidone can be used to treat the D2 antagonist induced vomiting. Why? Because they do not uh, cross the blood brain barrier and cannot interact with the D2 receptors which uh, if blocked cause extra pyramidal symptoms. So they can be used uh, safely in children. They also increase prolactin. Cisapride is banned. And mozapride is not an, actually a D2 antagonist, it is basically a 5-HT4 agonist and QT prolongation can be seen in this. Itopride is a D2 antagonist with no extra pyramidal symptoms. Now let's see how cannabinoids act. Now these are the last resort drugs when the patient do not respond to other antiemetics. How they act is that basically they act on the CB1 receptors in the chemotrigger zone. These receptors are mainly responsible for pleasure, eating behaviors, and they improve mood. Now the two chief drugs uh, included in this class are donabinol and nebulone. They have some serious side effects because they are the drugs of abuse, basically derived from cannabis sativa or marijuana. The side effects are sedation, central sympathomimetic effects such as tachycardia, palpitation, hypertension, hallucinations, uh, disorientation and drug dependence. Lastly, the adjuvants include the benzodiazepines and the glucocorticoids. You know, glucocorticoids like to sneak into every other classification that we do here. Anyhow, they act as anti-inflammatory and they have severe metabolic disturbances at their, as their side effects. The benzodiazepines actually how they act is by their three properties that is sedative, amnesic and anxiolytic. They are used to control the psychogenic or anticipatory vomiting that is the one you have when you are about to open your pharmacology book and their side effects are sedation and severe CNS depression can occur. That's all.